welcome to the Sock Witchery Podcast. My name is Lindsay. I am coming to you from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where I live with my husband Colin and our cat Gigi. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and Ravelry as Sock Witchery. And this is my knitting podcast where I talk mostly about socks, especially in this episode. We're going to try this sock sweater format again. So welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, I hope you see something you like and you stick around. First, thank you to everyone who has shopped my birthday sale so far. So I am running my annual two week long birthday sale that I always do the week, two weeks leading up to my birthday. So right now from today, which is August 11th until Wednesday, August 17th with the code 36 birthday, you can get 36% off my patterns in my Ravelry shop. If you are unable to access Ravelry, just send me a message on Instagram or at sockwitchery at gmail.com and I will find a way to get those patterns to you. Yay. So, um, yeah, the sock sweater episodes have been, have worked out really well. So we're going to do that again as long as I have enough stuff to talk about. Um, like I said, it is Thursday, August 11th. I'm recording a day earlier than I normally would. I normally record on Fridays. But I have the time today and you'll see from the acquisitions segment that I have a lot of really fun stuff I'd love to cast on, but I wanted to wait to talk to you. But first, before I cast them on, we're back in the office because I finally got my act together <laughs> and got it cleaned up. So you can see I don't have, I have some, but I don't have the giant pile of yarn. I have most of my caked up yarn is in cubbies. They're, this one's not. But I have cube drawers now, so they're a little safer. I may be a little less distracting. And yeah, we're back in the office. I'm happy. Uh, Gigi is here with me. She is purring contentedly on the floor. She has eaten, so hopefully she will not eat <laughs> during the podcast. If she does and you hear random crunching in the background, that's her. I have just finished my last day of summer school orchestra that has been running for the last two weeks. So I will have, I'm fast forwarding life stuff a little bit. We'll talk more at the end, but um, I'm now, I have freedom from tomorrow until the 24th of August when I go back to school. So, yay. So let's talk about some socks, shall we? I will link everything I talk about down below. If I forget to mention something, please let me know and I can reply to you back in the comments. Also, before we get down to business, I pulled two winners for the Barley Pearl Bags giveaway and have heard from neither one of them. So I'm going to post them here. I'm going to do a side by side. So you shouldn't see my face right now. You should see the two winners. If either one of these is you, please email me at sockwitchery at gmail.com. Not sure how helpful commenting on your post was. So if you see them, please get back to me. I will give you until the next sock episode, which is in will be about three weeks because we're going to record the week of Wisconsin Sheep and Wool to get to me. Otherwise, I will draw new winners. Okay, let's talk about socks. I don't have as many FOs because I actually have been working a lot on sweaters. We'll talk about that in the sweater episode, but I have some to share with you. Um, let's do them in kind of chronological order of being finished. So I, this last July, or last month, did a um, tiny little knit along with Cherie of Ollie and Bella. She sent me this yarn at the Christmas time and we decided to knit the same pattern in the same yarn. We did Christmas in July. I generally don't do Christmas in July. I'm learning about myself that I don't love Christmas sock yarn, which is weird because I love Christmas, but the sock yarn for some reason I don't super get along. But these are my gingerbread snowflake socks. The yarn is by Suzanne of Green Lambkin Yarn, who also has a YouTube channel. These are on her sparkle base. I believe this was Silver Stellina. Can't really catch the spark. Oh, there's a little bit of sparkle. Like right here, you can see it a little bit. I did uh, the Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla Magic, Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop pattern, which I'll link down below. And I actually did an Eye of the Partridge heel, which I haven't done in so long. But they came out really cool. They look like tiny, like, stained glass windows almost. They are so cute. I did do my um, standard. I do a garter edge heel flat because they're easier to pick up. Uh, size 1 needle US, 1 2.25 millimeter, 64 stitch count. Heel flap and gusset. 
rounded toe. These came out very cute. So these will go in my Christmas box of socks, which I do have because Jude of the Stranded Dye Works podcast or Stranded podcast, I can't remember which, what the actual name is, um, uh, does the festive sock along every year to help fill up your Christmas box of socks. We're using my Metal Bryson blockers because we're upstairs and my sheep ones are downstairs. So that was pair one. I'm gonna roll them up nicely. I have a box where I'm keeping all of my uh, socks I've knit this summer. Even if they don't qualify for camp, I'm keeping them in there and I'm doing it like this where I roll up little like sock cinnamon rolls <laughs> and put them in the box. So that was pair one. You saw both of these on the last episode as, um, whip, whip, <laughs> as whips and they are now done. I now remember the name of this sock set. I literally had to go back through Tristan's like Instagram <laughs> feed to find the name of it. I couldn't remember. I'm like it's always October. No. Is it fall forever? No. Is it always fall? No. It is always autumn was the name of this. So this is a sock set. I believe it was a limited run one of a kind sock set from Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn. This is on her Myth Base, which is her 7525 base. I believe yardage is approximately like 430 some yards to 100 grams. Is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon with contrasting heels and toes. This is my string of lights pattern, which is available during my birthday sale on my Ravelry shop. Yeah, I did the size medium on a US 1, 2.25 millimeter, 64 stitch count. Yay. These took me a lot longer than I had anticipated. Um, I had watched, I think I said this in the last episode, I definitely posted about it on Instagram. I had watched the Hocus Pocus 2 trailer and went and pulled all my fall yarn out. <laughs> this was the first one. Because I bought this last fall and just like I had cast it on but then didn't finish it. I don't know why. Anyway, moving on to our next pair. You want to talk about long-term whips. These, this pair of socks has been on the needle, had been on the needle since October of last year. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know I have a lot of sock yarn. I also have a lot of needles and I continue to buy more needles because I run myself out of needles. These do not fit on this blocker very well. And I have a ton of bags. I have more bags to show you today too because I ordered another stitching plaza bag. Um, yeah, so these have been on the needle since October of last year. These were for my, I think these were for the Halfway to Haunts Cal or Socktober or someone did a Socktober knit along. I'm not doing a Socktober knit along. I have learned I'm bad at knit alongs, hosting them, participating in them just in general. So no knit along. <laughs> I, I promise you there will be people doing Socktober knit along so you can do them with them. This is the Paths of the Dead. This was a Tour de Tolkien by Bumblebee Acres. My String of Lights pattern. I love these. I like the I took I posted these on Instagram and you can't you almost can't do the color justice. It's 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 neon but also it's got these darker neon. It's just, it's so good. I love how these striped like the heels and the, I liked the pool. I just love these. This is on Bumblebee Acres Coquette Base, which is 75% Superwash, Corydale, and 25% Nylon. Again, size one, US size one, 2.25 millimeter. Sorry, I do all my socks on Magic Loop. Size medium. These came out really big. Like they're not too big, but like my gauge feels looser. I don't know why. They came out identical and I, you know, did them fairly far apart. And I, I don't know. But they came out really big. I have like less yardage left than I normally do or less grams left. I don't know. It's fine. They're done. And I have extra yarn to put into a scrap project at some point. My last FO is a Stephen King Club from, oh geez, I don't have the tag. I have the tag. It's in that box, but I don't want to go dig it out. I think this was March, February. Christine was January. I think this was February. Anyway, again, my, I should just bring my sheet blockers upstairs again, but I use them for staging photos in the kitchen. Cause yeah, trade secrets, stage my photos on the kitchen floor <laughs> with my backdrop. That's where I have the best lighting. I get the least amount of shadows and weird glare. 
But unfortunately, that means I leave my sheet blockers downstairs because they're hung on the wall and that just seems to be the best place for them so I don't have to run up and down the stairs to get them when I finish socks. Anyway, these are prom night. These were the Carrie inspired pair. And I had said this on Instagram and I'll say it here too. I love Bumblebee's Stephen King Club because unless you saw the art inspiration, I don't think anyone would really pick out that these are Carrie, like Stephen King inspired. Really cool pink. I love how the purple pulled through there, like, and on the foot. It's almost like, I just, I just love it. Shocking, I love a Bumblebee Acres yarn. String of Lights, medium size, US size one, Magic Loop, 2.25 millimeter. Yay, two by two rib. Yay. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna remember to take a thumbnail for this. I hope I remember to take a thumbnail for this. We'll see if I do. All right, so that is it for FOs. Now comes the whip parade. So I picked a selection. Some of these I'm far on, some of these I'm not. Do you guys care if I show things that are like essentially ribbing? If like the color's cool? I don't know, let me know. Let me know what you think. I have a lot to show you. I was doing this arbitrary thing that I like to do where I decided I was only gonna knit token. Oops, sorry, lid fell on the blockers. I was only gonna knit token yarn for the month of August to get hyped up for Rings of Power. I did one pair. I have you know, more on the needles that we're gonna talk about. I've just been very distracted by my sweaters and every sock yarn I own. And so while there were not a ton of FOs, there's gonna be a ton of uh, whips. Okay, um, in no particular order of when I've knit them or when I've worked on them. You know what, executive decision in the middle of the podcast. I am not gonna show you anything that I showed you last time that I've worked on. So that would be my toasted marshmallow socks and my running up that hill. I talked about this in the last episode. They're not done. I will show you them when they're done. Let's talk about things I have not shown you. So, and I think I talked about this one. Really quickly, I'll talk about this in case I did not. These are my new moon socks from Bumblebee Acres from their Twilight collection. I am on the heel flap. Finally, this is gorgeous yellow and brown and tan with some like rust speckles in it. Oops, sorry, hit my nails on the tripod. Has a uh, charmed and dangerous pet rock friend, which I've shown you before. Yeah, I had a goal to get all my Twilight yarn knit up before Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and that's not going to happen. So, Twilight socks. Pretty sure I talked about this in the last episode. Just wanted to make sure in case I hadn't. Oh, my shirt. This is from Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. We are, um, working on exchanging brewery t-shirts since we can't ship each other beer. So she she got the first one, so I, she has one coming. She does, well, she'll know that when she watches this, but she doesn't know from where. Okay, things I have knit on recently and you have not seen. So, we'll just grab my Tolkien, my new Tolkien bag. I had talked about this on the podcast previous. I don't remember if I talked about the socks that are in here. Maybe I did. You think I would have gone back to look, but I didn't. This is Meat is Back on the Menu Boys, which is from the uh, Tolkien Two Towers calendar with my Tiddly Bakes beer mug. This is Bumblebee Acres on their Coquette base, and I am doing String of Lights. The bag is by Fate's Thread. There you go. That's all the info on those. Yay. Like I said, a lot of stuff I've cast on and like worked like 10 rounds, like the ribbing in 10 rounds, and I'm like, ooh, new shiny object. So, next up, oh, here we go. Let's talk about things that you know, are ancient and have been on the needles for a million years, and I pulled back out and decided to work on. So, this half object is uh, a sock, <laughs> a string of light sock, knit in Bumblebee Acres yarn. <laughs> so, this is Old Salem. This is actually in their update that is happening tomorrow, which is Friday, August 12th at 7 p.m. You can check their YouTube channel or their Instagram for that. So this is Old Salem. I cast these on last fall as well. Don't know why they fell by the wayside. They're very good. And I am a, I'm about to turn the heel on the second sock. That is a charm from Pitter Patter Polymer. It is, it's a spell book. It's thought since this is Old Salem, that was appropriate. 
I am cheating on my chow goos. I am using Addy uh, Rocket Squared. So they have, they're actually uh, square shaped needles and they have ridges on them. And I've just really liked them lately. The cord's a little better than a standard Addy. Also, I've noticed, I don't know if it's this pair or my other pair, because I have two pairs and one I bought recently. They started engraving the number on their needle finally. Because I was just, this is my needle storage right here, and I was organizing and had to get out a needle gauge because they just printed it on the cord, and some of those needles are so old, they've just, it's all rubbed off. So, these will be an FO by the time you see them again. I wanted to get them done this week, but I got distracted by a sweater. You'll see on the sweater episode. Hi, Jeech. She's gotten up and she was eating. So if you heard her crunching, that's what she was doing. Now she's flopped over. She has the one toy I've ever crocheted her and she is going to hang out with that for a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. That is living in a takeout bag by Simply Serving. That's like, I think five or six years old at this point. I like these. I like, eh. Drawstring is my favorite type of bag. You don't mind a zipper bag, don't mind a snap bag, but drawstring is my favorite. But this is nice because you can feed it up out of the middle while you are out working. Yes, ma'am? Yeah? You just hang out. Living in my very first ever Mountain State Stitches bag that I got last year, has red pandas on it, is another half object from last fall. This is the Vampire's Thrall colorway from Bumblebee Acres. It was originally a one of the kind colorway, one of the, one of a kind colorway, and then they brought it in for their uh, Halloween collection last year. I don't think this is on deck for this year, but again, string of lights. It's brown, like a gray brown and burgundy has my Halloween cookie plate from Pitter Patter Polymer on it and it is a string light sock. I am not, I haven't even cast on the second one. The reason these have Addies on them is because I was out of chow goose and so I just threw Addies in the bag. So hopefully these will be done. I don't know, maybe. Old Salem will definitely be done because they're halfway there anyway, but these might hang out a little longer. Again, those are from last October. That's embarrassing. Okay other older whips and then all the rest of these are new this i cast on this is living in a hannah lou designs bag oh there's the tag hannah lou designs bag exclusively from bumblebee acres it's a like a corduroy and it's got these really cute flowers this is rosy cotton i believe yep rosy cotton lord of the rings inspired on their coquette Sock base by Bumblebee Acres. They don't do ball bands unless they're doing sock sets. They do. They do tags. And this is actually my second breakfast pattern. I cast these on this last spring. It's so pretty. I do all my Hobbit inspired yarns. Rosie Cotton is uh, Samwise Gamgee's wife. So I do all my Hobbits in second breakfast, which is also available in my pattern sale. I don't do this pattern as often as I should, but it's really nice. Yeah, I have a waffle from Pitter Patter Polymer on here. It's one of the first ones I got from her. Yeah, so these will hopefully get some love as well. They were part of the I'm getting in on every Tolkien uh, whip I have marathon. So I haven't, I have not worked on these much, but I hope to in the future. The problem is we have incoming fall yarn. Yeah, I have zero chill when it comes to fall stuff, like most knitters. So let's talk about all my kind of spooky stuff that I've cast on. Oh wait, no, we have one summery one before we do that. Living in my Mountain State Stitches bag with all my camp pens on it is my Chasing Fireflies sock set, upside down, by Bumblebee Acres, which has a midnight mini. This was kind of their alternate uh, camp colorway after the original one sold out and they couldn't replicate it. It's purple and green and blue with the neon. And here is what it looks like knit up so far. String of lights. This is a uh, one of the cat collection I have from Pitter Patter Polymer. This little star glows in the dark. It is very cute. So I just cast these on the other day. 
This is the mini. Again, on Coquette, this is a uh, 20 gram mini. This is really pretty purpley gray color. So I'm working on those. I'm actually gonna take these with us this weekend. Forgot to put Rosie Cotton's tag away. Rosie Cotton, there we go. So that's it for non halloween -y related socks. So I have four more to talk to you about. I have living in my Hannah Lou Designs ball bag. I love these bags. They're perfectly sized. You can fit the skater yarn, the needles, and then if you have a second sock or a first sock, it fits really well. It's got cute glow in the dark, glow in the dark skeletons. And then it's got a little drawstring and it's got candy corn in it. And living in here are my pumpkin ghoul socks. So this is the colorway from last year. It will be available in their shop update on Friday as well. And I'm doing string of lights. Again, this was in the uh, manic cast on all the fall things. This has my cosmic brownie grumpy cat by Pitter Patter Polymer. I am back on my chogus for these. Uh, string of lights, size medium. In case you haven't heard me say it enough today. Yeah. That's a pumpkin ghoul. I'd like to have, my goal was to get all the Halloween colors from last year finished before the colors for this year came. And then unless, I mean, I'm gonna take this next, let's see. Today's Thursday. Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm gonna take this next week and four days. So 11 days, 12, 11, 12 days to just knit while I'm home on break or my last part of break. We start in service on the 24th. So some of these might actually get done. We'll see. If you want to cheerlead me on, that would be very helpful. <laughs> just encourage me to not cast on all the things, to finish all the things, not cast on, finish, not cast on. We know I'm going to cast stuff on. When I show you acquisitions, you're going to know I'm going to cast stuff on. Next up in the last year's Halloween colorways, Oh no, that's not this, that's this. Living in my, I'm, yeah, no, I said that bag. This is living in a uh, Stitching the High Notes fall bag. It's, uh, this is her smallest bag. It's a little larger than a sock bag. You could probably fit like a two skein shawl in here, fingering white two skein shawl. And this is Zombie Bite. Which as I'm knitting them, you could claim Christmas but it's the green kind of has like rotten spots in it, if you know what I mean, like colorway wise. And I've got a Nightmare Daisy from Lindsay of Simply Serving. And I'm again ch uh, cheating on my Chowgoos. These are high, high steels. These are not sharps. These are just their standard. They're, pl I mean, can I don't know if it'll focus, but they're plenty sharp. Yeah, I like how this is. The pumpkin ghoul and this are knitting up kind of similarly. Same with Paths of the Dead, but I kind of love this pooling a lot because you'll notice I don't knit a lot of self-striping yarn. I don't know why it's not my favorite thing to knit. It's okay. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> it helps keep my yarn buying to as slightly obsessive as it is. So I like when they do this. I also don't mind the pooling, so I love this progress keeper. It's so creepy. I have a poppy that has an eyeball in it too. This one is cool because it's like a glass like eyeball. It's not clay, so it looks real. It's so creepy. I love it. I'm a creepy weirdo. It's fine. <laughs> I'm so excited for fall because I'm excited to watch all the spooky movies that we have listed for this year. I think I talked about that, that Colin and I spend September and October watching all the spooky and horror movies we wanted to watch for the year. Okay, that, that's that. This is in a bag by, okay, it's Caleb, who is, oh my gosh, give me, give me one, one second. I'm gonna look this up on Etsy because this bag is so old that this is Caleb, who, Caleb and his, and Justin, are the people, or are the people, are the gentlemen who have the podcast. And the shop is called, do, 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 am I even going to be able to find it? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, am I going to cut any of this out? Probably not. Am I going to continue to scroll and look and not find anything? Pro the bearded pearl. He is the bearded pearl now. But this is from when he was not the bearded pearl and he was... A simpler home, that was what he was then. 
So this is, this fabric you can find, like I, I'm sure there are other bags like this. This is the bag I get the most compliments on. Sock size bag, zipper, cute inside. Living in here, again on needles that are not Chiaogu, is the very, very beginning of the Rhinebeck Roomies I'm gonna knit. That is a pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady. And the colorway is from uh, Legacy Fiber Arts's Halloween collection, or one of their Halloween colors from last year. This is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice on their Steel Toes, which is a 75 merino, 25% nylon, superwash, sock yarn. The, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. it doesn't give me yardage on here. It's four ply, there you go. It's one of several I have. I also have a Tiddly Bakes hanging out in here waiting to be put on. This is my spooky pumpkin. Again, like I said, let me know if you don't want to see things that are just ribbing. I thought I was further on this than I was. Ooh. It's okay. Crisis averted, I zip my arm. Okay. One more that I just cast on. So when I finished my Christine socks, I cast on a new Stephen King color. I was trying to go in order, but I couldn't because I needed to knit this one like immediately. I think there's one more ahead of this one that I didn't do. Also fair warning, this is the sparkly spider bag. So if you don't want to see a giant spider look away before I put it up and then I'll tell you when I put it back down. Ready? Three, two, giant spider. Stitching Plaza bag for this last Halloween or this current Halloween. It's down now, you can look again. And I am doing the Misery colorway, which is April 2022. And yeah, so that meant that prom queen or prom night was February. Losers Club was March, which I haven't done. And then this was April. This is Misery. <sighs> and like I said, I'm only ribbing. But it's enough for you to see the color. I really like it. I'm working with a little bit of weird lighting today. It's sunny, but like we're in the oh, shadowier part of the house. So I apologize to not the best. I'm hoping when I edit, it'll be a little better. Oh, here comes the cat. Mump the tripod. <gasps> you didn't. You're so stealthy. Now she's leaving. So yeah, that's my misery colorway. Um, I will show you this past month's colorway now because I'm gonna do acquisitions. Yay. All right, that's all my that's all my whip. So if you are not here for the zero chill yarn purchasing, thanks for hanging out and I will see you on the next one. If you are here for yarn ridiculousness, welcome. Okay, first I'm gonna start with a non yarn thing I purchased. So, um, if you've seen my Instagram photos of my finished objects, I have, I like to pair my staging of my finished socks with books, especially if I have like a relevant book. And I have several copies of Tolkien books, but I did not have a hardcover Hobbit. So I bought myself the 75th anniversary edition of the Hobbit in hardcover. I love this dust jacket. It's like my favorite interpretation of the Hobbit. Uh, has the map on the inside. Has a couple of color illustrations on the inside. There's the other half of the map. Yay, so you'll start seeing these in my There and Back Again Club photos because that club started. So let's talk about that club first. So we, I'll talk about my two Bumblebee clubs first. Um, I'm assuming everyone has these because I have had them for a couple or a week or two now. So if you don't, please look away. I'm going to show them now. This was the first color of the There and Back Again collection, which is the new uh, Lord of the Rings slash Tolkien inspired collection now that the uh, tour to Tolkien is done. And this is Good Morning. If you know The Hobbit, you will understand why I snorted. Elizabeth on the Holly Press Fibers podcast was talking about ponytails on <laughs> sock skeins. I am the, I like to hold them this way, not this way, but these colors are very pretty. They uh, told me that the uh, Hobbit is, Hobbit collection is going to be a little more playful than the Tolkien ones. The Tolkien ones are very earthy and they're not doing just places. They're going to do other inspiration as well so they can play around with it a little more. Now that True to Tolkien was in any way like, disappointing. I loved to tour to Tolkien as evidenced by yeah. 
So that was the there and back again color for June, July, sorry, July. And this is the Stephen King color for July. This is Rose the Hat, which is from Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. It's so cool. Look at the ponytail on this one. Yeah. I like that it's blowing out my drawer and actually showing you the color. Ta-da. So that is Rose the Hat. That is all the Bumblebee Acres yarn I have because the fall Halloween sale hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Wait till the next episode. It's going to be a little silly. Um, also speaking of, I am, if we talk about the schedule really quick, so I'm recording in the second week of August, in the second week of August, second week of August I am going to record second week of September, which is also second full week. No, first full week of September. It'll be the weekend of uh, Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, which I hope to do a vlog for, and then I will do a haul video, and that'll probably serve as a podcast for September. Because with school starting, I'm not sure how much knitting time I'm gonna have. I have, um, we have some new stuff happening with grading and standards and lots of boring teacher-related stuff that you don't really wanna hear about, but I'm not sure how much knitting time I'm gonna have with all the prep I'm gonna have to do for that. Let's talk next about yarn that I ordered in April and have now received. So Treehouse Knits did a Gilmore Girl collection this past spring and my yarn for it came. So I got three. Uh, this is on her Spruce Sock, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards to 100 grams. It is a four ply. This is I Smell Snow. cannot. I love it. I kind of forgot which ones I bought, which was kind of a nice surprise. So I got I Smell Snow. I got Williams Hardware, which held such a special place in my heart for Gilmore Girls. This is absolutely gorgeous. These are all the same base as the Hirsch Bruce Sock. Oh yeah, this, this is real good. That's real good. And then I got Luke's Diner because you have to, right? That's, this is Luke's Diner, again on her spruce. I don't know how true to color that's reading. It's a little more green than it's coming out on my viewfinder. Grants my ancient iPhone Plus, 8 Plus, so yeah, that's my last Treehouse Knits color. She is going to do a Stranger Things Season 4 collection, and I think in like two weeks. Yeah, go check out her Instagram. <laughs> They're gonna be really good. The uh, the most most metal ever, I think is the name of the color. It's, she's revealed two, might be three by the time this goes up. She was gonna reveal the hopper colorway today, but yeah. You know who else has been doing a lot of Stranger Things colors and I have been, well, not a lot, but she, I mean, she's been doing Stranger Things colors is Tristan of Dragonhorn. I had not, I have not bought them yet other than running up that hill. I'm probably gonna buy more. Um, let's talk about clubs. Oh, we'll talk about Gaddy Yarnco. So I got the Ariel Disney Princess Club for August. August? July. July. I don't know what month it is. I love this. I like when people don't do just the standard Ariel colors of like, you know, red, green, and purple. This is gorgeous. I missed the bell sign up. I totally spaced. So I'll be missing that one. But she is also starting a Gilmore Girls Club. I'll link her down below. This is Ashley of Gaddy Yarn Co. And then along with my shirt, Kay sent me a birthday skein of yarn. This is Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by Gaddy Yarn Co. It is my couple of romance. Right? This is one of those ones that like I had to wait until I podcasted to knit up and now I'm gonna. I am not as much of an emo kid as I was a pop punk kid. Well, still I'm a pop punk kid, but I did love Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. That's a good one. Okay, um, let's continue on the K train for a sec. I ordered some Pretty Twisted Yarn from her in one of her last updates. Ha! Ah, don't have a ton of Teresa's yarn. I need more of it. But this is I Would Tie-Dye for You, E-W-E-U. 
Um, it's actually my favorite print song is I Would Die For You, so this is kind of fun for me. It's on her lavish base. It's an 8515 Extra Fine Superwash Merino Nylon 437 to 100 4 ply. This is another one that I wanted to cast on immediately, so I would probably do that as well. The weather this weekend isn't supposed to be super warm, so I'm thinking I'm going to have a little more knitting time than I would normally, but we'll see. Um, let's do... I went to visit my local yarn shop, which is, um, my gosh, Nitty Gritty Yarn Shop in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. They ship, so if you see something you like that I show, get a hold of them and they can get it for you. They have a lovely website. I will link them down below. So, uh, Dynasty Fibers is, is exclusive to, um, Nitty Gritty, and this is on the, this is Fiber Squad. Most of the yarn I have from Nitty Gritty, or from Dynasty, it's right here, is their bamboo uh, sock base. This is their fingering, or just their normal 75-25 fingering weight, 4-ply, 437, and the colorway is Trisha's Autumn Kaleidoscope. So, fun story about why I bought this, other than, you know, I like to support my local yarn shop is that Karen and I, um, we've been flip-flopping this summer, uh, going to visit each other to like go to yarn shops and knit and hang out and stuff, go to lunch, drink beer. And um, it was my turn to go visit her, so we went, I went to visit her. We went, to, we drove about a half an hour to go to a yarn shop, that was a little disappointing. And then we came back and we went to the Wisconsin Wool Exchange in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Um, who we really like. It's all local stuff, and there's a dyer. I think it's Misfit Yarn. I have, I have, it's a cast on. I have some of their yarn. But Karen got the one skein that looked like this, and I was so jealous. And then I was lucky because I went to Nitty Gritty and they had a similar skein. So here's Dynasty Fibers, Trisha's Autumn Kaleidoscope. I'm gonna save this for October. That one I'm gonna save. Then I went to the lovely Elizabeth of Holly Press Fibers to uh, get some sock sets from her because she has some absolutely gorgeous Tolkien yarn. So I got two of these. I got, this is the Dead Marshes with an orange mini. This is her sheepish sock, 7525 Merino Nylon, 463, 100 grams, plus the mini is 20. Uh, I did her Elvish Singing colorway as one of my first uh, camp socks for the year. So that's the Dead Marshes. And I also got The Last Light of Durin's Day. She and I are actually going to cast this on together on the 22nd of August and knit the, the pair together. So pretty. And I got the bronze mini with that. Yay. Mm. I like her yarn a lot. I'm glad I found her. Well, I found her through K, but I'm glad I found her on after that as well. And then lastly, I have, I was pretty chill on my dragon horde buying this uh, podcast, except that I have a bunch coming in the mail that hasn't arrived yet. But I got another one of her Disney princesses. This is Jasmine, who I said I had, and that was a lie. I have Tiana, not Jasmine. I have Ariel, Merida, Jasmine, Tiana, not knit up, and I've knit Belle, Rapunzel, and Megra. So, Jasmine. I have two Jasmines now because I also have Jasmine from Gabby Yarn Co. So that, oh, sorry, the, I generally will buy her lore base, which is an 8515, 463 yards, 100 grams. You gonna focus? There you go, kind of, sort of. And then I got another skein of lore fingering. This is going on an adventure. This is a Hobbit inspired color. Again, on her lore base. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna cast this on very, very soon. This might be like my rings of power cast on. I don't know, I'll probably do two, let's be real. And then I got a, uh, I got a new polymer clay progress keeper. The lid does not wanna come off the box. Okay, here we go. Um, she did an autumnal Hobbit door. It's a little big. She even said that, but I like how big it is. It makes it special. It's got leaves and it's just super cute. So autumnal Hobbit door. Progress Keeper. You will see more Lord of the Rings related yarn from Tristan on the next episode because I have a lot of it coming. Yay. And then lastly, 
last but certainly not least, I ordered a new stitching closet bag. So George Ann has started doing larger bags. So this is, you know I love Stephen King. I know it's not everyone's jam and this definitely will not be everyone's jam. But I got her Pennywise bag. It's got a faux leather bottom. It's a box bottom bag. It's got a D-ring for a handle or, you know, scissors or what have you. And then cool lining on the inside. It's a, it's, I'm actually going to switch a sweater into here. It's a, it's a, <coughs> choke my own spit. Maybe not a worsted weight sweater bag. I got some fingering weight ones that'll definitely go in here. So, and with that, she also sent me a matching notions pouch with, I love this cork, this like gold cork. I have a bag with this on it too. Get It's got, I could attach the notions pouch to the bag and then her polka dot inside. And she has given you guys a discount code. So with, I have to consult my note. So with the code SOCKWITCH10, which I'll put up here, SOCKWITCH10, you can get 10% off your order from now until Halloween. So that would be October 31st, 2022. So thank you, George Ann. And please tell George Ann thank you if you go to take advantage of her discount code. So that is it. It's only half an hour, that's not too bad. I haven't rambled too much. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. I'll talk about books on the sweater episode. So life stuff, watching and life stuff, watching, still working through needles at the ready. I think I'm caught up. I haven't watching a lot of podcasts. I restarted watching stranger things from season one. I'm into season two now I'm doing a lot of knitting just with my headphones in listening to music, life stuff. I didn't do much in, Ju in July, and that was kind of the point because we spent a lot of the beginning of the summer traveling. Um, got to hang out with some uh, work friends right after I recorded the sock episode, sweater episode, sock episode. So that was nice. Uh, we're going to do that again this next month. I'm looking forward to going back to school because I get to see my work friends. Um, yeah, just been taking it easy on the weekends. We went to German Fest. Uh, got to see the wonderful Bumblebee Acres family, most of them. It was everyone but Haleana, but Baby Bee. That was a good day. We haven't gone to the movies. We saw Thor Love and Thunder. That was the last movie we went to. Yeah, that's kind of been it. I've been knitting, I've been reading, I've been hanging out, enjoying my break. Uh, we're gonna go see my family for my birthday. My birthday is on Wednesday next week. Um, for right after, or for my birthday, like weekend, we're going to go see John Mulaney in Milwaukee. So that'll be super fun. Yeah. We've just been, you know, cooking at home and hanging out, watching YouTube at night. All that good stuff. The YouTube stuff we watch together is we watch Game Grumps, which is a let's play. And we watch Secret Sleepover Society, which is a video on demand YouTube channel of a Twitch stream. And then we watch Droffy as well, with a couple other things thrown in. But that's usually our nighttime viewing. That's pretty much it. I've just been trying to take it easy because summer is ending. It hasn't been unbearably hot here. It's been hot, but not, like, abnormally hot. We've had a lot of storms. That's kind of it. Not much going on. It's hanging out. Okay, on that note, I'm going to let you go. And I hope you have a lovely couple of weeks before I see you again for the sweater episode. And I hope you get a lot of knitting.